Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a trip over to the chameleon side of TikTok, which should be exciting. We're going to see the good and the bad, how people are keeping them. We're going to see if we agree or not. So if you do enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe so that more people get to see it as well. Let's dive in. That was an incredible blue panther chameleon. Honestly, if I wasn't aware of some of the morphs going on, some of the, well, I shouldn't say morphs, I should say localities, I guess, I would even suspect that that was fake. Well, that chameleon clearly wasn't enjoying the interaction, was it? Now, that's going to be our first point of debate in the video because some people say that they absolutely must be in screen cages for ventilation, otherwise they'll get RIs. Other people say cages like that work just fine. Now, I personally know people that keep them in glass or glass and mesh top enclosures like that or vivariums that are adapted. And I also know people that keep them have kept them in ventilated screen cages and they have both worked and they both disagree with each other. Me, personally, I've got more experience with chameleons in the wild than in captivity, so I'm not going to say either way, you know, what is best. I think that's something for the experts and the long-term keepers to give us some input on. Just one of the many services a chameleon can perform in your home. So that is exactly what you do not do with a chameleon. You don't grab them, you don't do anything that stresses them out. I just said earlier that I've got more experience with chameleons in the wild than in captivity, but even if you look into their natural histories, like into their breeding strategy for example, one of the things you learn about them is that they're prone to stress. Stress can literally kill chameleons. So doing something where it's struggling, trying to get out of the water, I'm sure they had good intentions, but really don't ever do that. This is Brachesia micra, a chameleon native to Madagascar. It is believed to be the world's smallest chameleon, as well as the world's smallest reptile ever discovered. Fully grown, this little guy is no longer than 29 millimeters. Yes, millimeters. That's about an inch from the tip of its tail to the end of its nose. Tragically, the only area in which they are known to live is also being rapidly deforested, and their future is very much in doubt. Stay curious, my friend. Those tiny chameleons are absolutely fascinating. Like you said, their future is in doubt. I mean, if they're very small and they live in a limited area of habitat as well, I mean, they're very vulnerable to extinction. Uh, apparently there is a new species which is even smaller called Brachesia nana. Uh, I'm not aware of just how different it is from that one, but probably at the time when he recorded that, it was correct. Good morning, feed my chameleon sprinkles with me. When Sprinkles is dehydrated, I like to give him hornworms as treats. What are you doing? Okay. No, no. I forgot that I fed his roaches blueberries. So when he crunches them, there's like purple stuff coming out of them. And it's like, what is that? <laughs> I have to feed his bugs fruits and vegetables before he eats them. It's ridiculous. Someone's already being picky today, you missed. These are silkworms. Good job. The crunch. Ew, I hate roaches. 
Sprinkles expects to be hand-fed each bug individually, or else he literally won't eat. Talk about spoiled. Nope, we missed. It's okay. That was pretty cool. Obviously that's a really healthy, happy looking chameleon, but the reason I actually included that clip is to kind of give you all an idea of just how much interaction you can get from these animals. They are a lot more interactive than snakes, even though I love snakes, and they're just all around a different kind of pet. They are amazing to have in your home. Another example of how they can help you around the home. Personally, I'm always really paranoid about giving any of my animals like non-feeder bugs though for some reason. I'm always worried about them catching parasites or diseases from them. I don't know how likely it really is, but I'm just picky about that. Again, with the stress thing, if they're hissing, if they're angry, that's a good idea to leave them alone. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Ah, Lee, you just f***ed up all the plants, you f***er. Every time I do one of these videos, there's always a cat clip for some reason. Now, I've got to say, in fairness on that one, I don't think they just, you know, let the cat in there and forgot about it. I think that the cat has managed to get in through that hatch in the roof of the enclosure. I mean, cats are sneaky. If they're somewhere warm, they're gonna try and get there. It's always something to think about. I do love their little mitts. Uh, they've got their toes bundled, three on one side, two on the other, and then inversed or reversed, whatever the term is, on the back feet. And they're bundled into fascicles, which just means a bundle of organs or tissues or whatever. Um, but it's really cool. It gives them that wonderful gripping effect. It makes them reminiscent almost of koala's feet and some bird's feet. It makes them great at gripping branches, and it just makes them look like little mitts, which is quite cute as well. This female Namaqua chameleon is searching for a mate. No part of her body seems suited to such an environment. Her feet, that could give her such a good grip on twigs, should surely be useless on soft sand. But she's able to spread them like snowshoes. She needs to get warm and active while the desert is still cool, so she exploits the chameleon's versatile skin. The side facing the sun goes dark to absorb the sun's heat, while the other remains light and minimizes the heat escaping from her body. She's hungry, and food is scarce, but she's still not quick enough to grab these desert beetles. Her solution is simple. She finds, at last, a little vegetation and waits for a shade-seeking beetle to come to her. On she goes in her search for a mate. <laughs> nice sound effects at the end there, and a nice squelching, crunchy beetle. Those are a really cool species of chameleon. Obviously chameleons, ancestrally, they're all from arboreal roots, so they're all adapted to live in trees, grass branches, blend in, all of that. And what's happened here is eventually their, their, their radiation, their range, has reached a desert, and they've adapted to spread into the desert. And that's what gives you an animal that looks like it should be arboreal, but it's adapted for desert life. And that, of course, is where we get the term adaptive radiation, which leads to speciation. 
Look at this guys, this is even bigger than the yellow-lipped Parsons chameleon that we found earlier in Rano Mafana. We found this guy here in Andazi Bay and this is the orange-eyed Parsons chameleon. And this guy is as big, well this is even bigger than the one we found before. This guy can easily take like a bird or something. So they're amazingly large, look at this guy. Parsons chameleons are amazing. I don't think they're too common in captivity yet. They are the largest by weight. I think the second largest chameleon by length. I think maybe the Malagasy giant chameleon is a little bit longer. Um, but I have heard, someone told me they were more long-lived than other chameleons as well. So that is a species that, I mean, if I was going to get one as a pet, it would be up there on the list for sure. <laughs> Nice. Went for the easy option. Very smart. So there are a couple of species of chameleons that will eat vegetable matter, um, which probably in the wild probably helps out if they're from drier areas. It's probably a good source of water as well. That one was loving the cucumber. The only thing you always have to remember is to be very cautious about feeding any animal avocado. Um, if you want to try your veiled chameleon with cucumber, go for it. Obviously insects that are gut loaded need to make, make up the bulk of what they eat. This is a really good question. What is the life expectancy of a chameleon? Now, obviously, we're talking about panther chameleons here. Other chameleons do live to different ages, but male panther chameleons tend to live to around five to seven years. They have known to be living longer, anywhere up to nine years. But again, it depends whether they're getting the right care. And then we're going to move on to the female chameleons and female chameleons live two to four years again they can live a little bit longer but not much this is only due to they lay eggs so it's very very stressful on their body and guys just a quick one i thought i'd upload the first ever video of river onto the channel because river is bonzo's girlfriend and i think it's only fair that she gets a little bit of the limelight as she is gorgeous as well yep that is the one downside with chameleons. A lot of them are quite short-lived compared to other reptiles. I mean, when you think that there was once, if I remember correctly, a leopard gecko that lived to 40, you know, that is a short lifespan and they're so personable. I mean, last time I met a panther chameleon, it wasn't just randomly out there, I was at a friend's house. Um, it crawled onto my arm and it didn't want to get off. It decided we were friends and it was coming to the cage before it came out to get fed and you know you just get all this interaction from them and I'm always telling people not to anthropomorphize animals because um, that can lead to errors in their care but this is one animal that I feel like it's going to interact with you every day and no matter how tough you are you're probably going to get a bit attached to it. Anyway that was the video. I think that was kind of a good overview of what's going on with chameleons in the pet trade and hopefully some fun facts for you about what they're like in the wild too so if you did enjoy this please do like subscribe and please come back next week also last but not least please do let me know what you'd like to see on the channel thank you very much 